Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here, and this is a 6.3 inch phone. It's a 6.3 inch phone. It's a bit of a test from Samsung to see how big of a device you and I are willing to keep buying. We bought the five inch Galaxy S4, we bought the 5.5 inch Galaxy Note 2. How big are we willing to go with this? I'm gonna try to review this entire device without saying that's what she said once. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but without any further ado, let's take a closer look at the Samsung Galaxy Mega. So this is the Mega 6.3, and obviously, yes, it is gigantic, as you can see next to the Galaxy S4. And it's really easy to say it's too big, even too big for a pocket, but it does fit in my pockets just fine, and even in purses quite easily, obviously. But yeah, there's no other way to put it. This is the biggest smartphone out there right now, and it even makes the Galaxy Note 2 feel a bit small. And while a lot of people will immediately dismiss this phone as being way too big, there is a select group of people out there looking for something like this, a device that's bigger than your typical smartphone, but pocketable unlike the smallest of tablets. So this can take the place of both in your life, the smartphone and the tablet. And this Galaxy Mega actually does a pretty good job of that from my experience. Now, from the Samsung point of view, this device is basically an experiment. They have that kind of money where they can put out some crazy new form factors and if people like it and buy it, they'll keep doing it. If not, they won't. They took a pretty big leap with the Galaxy Note and the Galaxy Note 2 and people ate that up. So they're going even bigger now with a 5.9 inch and a 6.3 inch Galaxy Mega variant with the same looks as the Galaxy S4. It's kind of like a vote with your wallet thing at this point. If people like it and buy it, Samsung will see that and we'll see more of this trend. Anyway, because this is such an experiment, the Galaxy Mega does not have flagship specs because it's not a flagship. It has Android 4.2.2 inside, but it's running a quad-core Snapdragon 400 CPU at a 1.7 gigahertz clock speed, and it scores a little more than half of what the Galaxy S4 with the Snapdragon 600 does on Quadrant. But luckily, it doesn't need more than a whole ton of power because while this display is massively huge, it is not 1080p. This is a 1280 by 720 display, so it doesn't need nearly as much power to push around way less pixels. So you sacrifice a bit of pixel density for a much better performance on the chip, but the display is still great actually. Colors, as you would expect with a Samsung AMOLED display, are very vibrant and viewing angles and brightness are still top notch, very good. And that adds to the media consumption experience on this tablet slash phone hybrid. It's much more fun to watch YouTube videos on this than anything else in Samsung's Galaxy lineup. And speaking of that Galaxy lineup, the Mega is very similar to the Galaxy S4, inside and out. It has a removable back to reveal a small speaker at the bottom, but it is pretty loud. And there's also a micro SD card slot up top for expandable storage next to that 8 megapixel camera. And of course, that brings us to one of the biggest advantages to carrying a mammoth of a phone like this, battery life. This is the biggest battery in any phone. 3,200 milliamp hours, and it can go for a long time on a battery. It's almost impossible to kill this thing in a day, even with heavy use. And there are some other advantages to having such a ridiculously Sasquatch gargantuan phone. <laughs> One is that you get more information on the screen. You just get more. It might not be 1080p, so it's not the sharpest thing in the world, unfortunately, so text could use a little bit of improvement but you can see so much in every app on the Mega. Each and every app just looks bigger than it usually does on any other phone. And the entire user interface scales and looks just mega-sized. All of it looks huge. And it doesn't even feel that tall, it feels more really wide. Apps don't stretch anymore, obviously, to take up the extra room, but they instead sit in the middle of the display with tons of space on either side. It's quite nice, actually. This would be a great phone for someone with not very good eyesight, or for someone with really large hands or large fingers, or someone who wears big gloves all the time, who knows. And just of course, if you feel like using this with one hand, Samsung added some of the single-handed features that it used in the Galaxy Note 2, just in case you feel the need to use this device with one hand for some of the apps. And yet another advantage of the huge display is the camera here. It feels like taking pictures with a tablet, but not really. But the fact of the matter is, with this display, it's so big that it kind of feels like you're looking through a window at what you want to take a picture or video of. And with the really solid 8 megapixel sensor in here, likely the same optics as the Galaxy S3, I've never had an easier time composing shots and taking them on any other phone. Now I also do want to say one of the biggest and most underrated advantages to having a larger screen on a phone is having a larger 
keyboard. And believe me when I say the on-screen typing experience on the Galaxy Mega 6.3 is oh so good. With any keyboard, whether it's Google's or Samsung's or a third party's, the fact that you have so much space for your fingers to move around and hit them keys, oh man, it's a great time. Great time texting or messaging on this thing. So basically, in summary, the Galaxy Mega is a giant phone that enhances all the things that are good about having a great, huge display. All the media, all the games and video watching, it's all great thanks to the screen. And since they took the Galaxy S4 design, but the Galaxy S3 specs, it's a mid-range performer and definitely an interesting experiment from Samsung. It's gonna fall in the same category as the Galaxy Note 2, where people will stop you in public and ask you about your phone. It's also in the same category where it takes a little bit of time to get used to the size, but once you get used to the Mega, it can be an all-in-one device that replaces your tablet and your phone, and really does give you the best of both worlds with an all-day battery life that fits in your pocket. And then of course, lastly, what a lot of people ask me when they want to see what this phone is like, they want to know what it looks like held up to your ear when making a phone call, because people still make those. Not bad, I mean, it's not quite as ridiculous as a tablet, but it's probably bigger than any other phone you've ever used. Either way, that's been it. It's the Samsung Galaxy Mega. I would say that there's a lot to like about this phone, especially like we said, the advantages of having such a big battery and such a big phone overall, all those advantages are still there. But I would still say that I prefer a 1080p display. I wouldn't recommend buying this phone only because this is the best look we're gonna get at the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. And when that phone does come out, it's going to have flagship specs. It's gonna have top of the line numbers, top of the line internals and externals and display. And that's gonna make this phone look a little bit dull. But if you don't have the budget for the Galaxy Note 3, this is a great alternative. And if you're looking for a big phone that lasts just all day on battery and then some, Galaxy Mega is uh, it's a place to look. It's a Samsung experiment and I think it's gonna sell interestingly. Either way, thanks for watching this quick review video. If you enjoyed it, definitely feel free to give a thumbs up below. And without any further ado, I'll sign off here now, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.